have you always been thinking about gaming or serious gaming as one way of teaching systems engineering? And now we actually have a, a research program on the area within our system engineering research center that we have. And this competition came as a precursor to that before that research project is started up as kind of an idea generator to see, uh, to use the creativity of people around the country to see what they would come up with uh, in form of a game or a serious game for teaching systems engineering. What we were looking for is, is more for research or to, to see, okay, how can we actually use games to teach what's often perceived as abstract concepts that we teach in systems engineering. And there's a couple of problems we have with, with systems engineering and teaching it is that many believe that you need a lot of experience to be a good systems engineer. It's hard for them to appreciate many of the concepts that we teach them. So, so one of the goals of creating uh, games or simulations that they can sharpen their skills in is actually to, to uh, to give them that experience to appreciate uh, the value of what we teach them. We launched a competition just after New Year's. We had a kickoff conference call where we explained the objectives of the game and, and what we tried to achieve, and a couple of QA calls after that. And uh, in May, we got uh, the submission, and from those submissions, we, we selected four finalists. Uh, two of those finalists were actually from Stevens. And the two other was one team from MIT and, and another team from uh, Purdue University. The criteria we gave them was to be able to, uh, well, there are two concepts that are very important in system engineering. First of all, to understand why you're building this system in the first place. What is the need? What is the problem that you're actually trying to, to solve with this system? And the other problem you have, a big problem you have with systems is that there's a lot of components interacting. So we have a lot of interaction with internal components in the system that often causes strange behavior in systems if we don't have them under control. So we wanted to, we wanted the teams to address those two aspects. It was quite interesting to see the variety in the games from, from uh, uh, military applications to healthcare to, to uh, more of an adventure type of a game um, in the distant future. So it was, uh, it was uh, very interesting to see the, the different approaches that the, the students had taken. Our um, Experience Accelerator submission is called basically sim systems and the main concept behind it is based on having like a framework where you can simulate a decision making uh, role in multiple you know possible systems engineering domains. So the way we see a more complex instantiation of the game is that we can have you know an out any number of players online concurrently subject to the same sort of um, situation and making you know, a multi-stage complex decision. Yeah. So we could see you know, a whole classroom of students or trainees who would all be exposed to the same scenario. So when you're playing the game, there will be a bunch of uh, resources that, you're, that you have. So it's a war game and you're trying to solve scenarios and you'll be given resources. So. To win a round or to successfully complete a scenario, you have to come up with the ideal solution or as close as you can to it. The type of people that would like this game are the same type of people who like SimCities and you know they like trying to do logistics types of things. So it's 50 years after the Great War of 2113 when most of civilization is destroyed. 300,000 people survived. People are working together in tribes. There's a race back in time to try to affect the events that lead up to the Great War. So our scenario, our scenarios are what lead up to the war, so you have to go back in time and try to solve those. To reach the end point, also you need to win or solve problems of minimal five scenarios. And so, or it's estimated the minimal requirements for each level. We have three different kind of levels, easy, uh, middle, and hard. 
and for different kind of level, we have different requirements for resources. So this program is called Project Robot. My concept was systems engineering simulator, uh, defense based because I work in the Department of Defense and I feel like I could like pull off that experience and you know make something that would be actually realistic. I gave it a science fiction theme. The gameplay itself, the fun is in trying to use the information you have to make decisions about your system and design and build essentially what is a, a giant robot. So that's the idea. We wanted to look at the process engineering side and this is something that goes unnoticed a lot of times because processes don't necessarily have an owner. The chips fall where they may, lots of things going on, you have to be observant. You don't necessarily, you know, crank the knob, have something come out, one for one reactions. You want it to be complex, just like the real world. The first is player determined inputs. These are all your knobs and dials that you can adjust as you build the system. How many doctors do you hire? How many beds? Where do you put them? When do you buy different wards? Those are your manipulable inputs. At the end of the day, those are going to affect your player performance. If you don't have the capacity to care for the number of patients that come in, and have bad outcomes. We got two winning teams uh, that shared uh, the grand prize. Uh, the, one of those teams showed us actually quite interestingly how you could integrate many of the system engineering concepts in, in designing a, a robot. And the other team showed us very nicely how you could make these types of games quite engaging and keep the dynam dynamics in the game while still maintaining uh, the learning objectives. And they were doing it in, in the healthcare area by managing resources in an in a emergency room, which is also quite a complex system to manage. Gaming is just in its infancy as a teaching tool, especially in areas like systems engineering, where experience is so important for your decision making, to have, to have uh, gone through different scenarios and been able to train on stuff without creating havoc, so to say. We kind of see it as a, as a flight simulator for aspiring and, and practicing systems engineers as well as, as young students, to have a safe environment where they can uh, practice, do failures and learn from them and, and do it again and do it again and, and thereby hone their skills just as a pilot has to go through a simulator, often to hone their uh, skills in, in certain emergency scenarios and make sure they're always uh, fit for the job they have to do.